So what's the big problem with wealth creation? How do people like us, who didn't inherit a boatload of money, who are investing and building wealth from our own blood, sweat and tears, how do we invest in a way that gives us remarkable results and become financially free before retirement age? I don't know about you, but I am sick of hearing from wealth gurus and experts who don't walk their own talk and prescribe strategies that are a one size fits all approach. For self-made people like you and me, I'm here to tell you that you don't need to be superhuman or already wealthy to reach financial freedom earlier than 65. My name is Selena Kulkarni and I'm a passionate investor, but with a difference. I spend half my time running a community for wealthy entrepreneurs looking to reach financial freedom in three to five years using exclusive real estate deals that deliver consistent, predictable cash flow. The other half of my time, I support motivated young adults who want to get started on their wealth building journeys. I've been a chartered accountant and investor in the trenches for over 25 years, but I didn't come from money. So I wanna help those who want to be self-made, master the fundamentals and fast track their financial freedom. I've had all the cuts and bruises in the past and now in this podcast, I wanna share real life experiences on what has worked, what hasn't worked and how you can take action that will set you apart from 99% of other investors so that you can get the results you want faster. Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. In today's episode, I actually want to talk a little bit about concept around how do we exploit and react to a volatile or fragile market. So there's a lot of people who entered the real estate market over the last couple of years who, you know, benefited from massive growth in a very short place, space of time. And a lot of those people that overextended themselves are now in huge financial pain. And, you know, I have great compassion for them. So this episode is really around saying if you are already in the game and you're maybe suffering a little what are some thoughts or actions that you could consider and at the other end of the spectrum if you haven't started investing and you are looking to start I want to give you some insight into how you might alter your thinking about opportunities in the coming 12 to 18 months so there was a book published by a guy called Nassim Taleb who was a mathematician turned trader turned uh, writer and it's called Anti-Fragile now this guy's the author of a lot of really interesting books Black Swan and things like that But one of the things he talks about is that you can be three kinds of investors, um, particularly in environments like today. You can be fragile, meaning whenever things don't go your way or, you know, there's there's disorder, you are damaged. Um, And then there's the resilient. There's people who are mostly, for the most part, unaffected by, you know, chaos in the economy. And then there's the third category of people that he describes as anti-fragile. So these are people who actually benefit from disorder. So I guess the question I'm asking is what is it that we could do to be the anti-fragile, meaning we benefit from disorder. We're not dragged down the gurgler. So there's someone who um, often comes up in response to any sort of conversation around anti-fragility or knowing how to avoid fragility, and that is the Roman philosopher Seneca. Now, Seneca, for those of you who haven't heard of him, is renowned for being the philosopher that kind of sparked the movement around Stoicism. Um, Lots of people have written about him, his beliefs. He kept a journal, which is why people know so much about him. And what a lot of people don't know about him was that he was, in fact, an incredibly wealthy guy. Um, he reflected off on, on this need to avoid being fragile. And, you know, essentially what, what most people suffer from is that the fear of loss is stronger than the joy of possession. So one or two things that he used to do on a regular basis was firstly, he was constantly mentally preparing for loss. Um, he regularly imagined that all his wealth was gone and he was starting over again. He regularly slept on the kitchen floor. He regularly drank from the dog bowl. And the reason he did those things was he wanted to remind himself of what the worst case scenario is. You know, I think when most people see uncertainty and volatility in the market, as we are experiencing right now, um, the first instinct is to run away. In terms of news that, uh, you know, if we think most recently, there's been announcements in the US that you know the, the Federal Reserve think that interest rates will come down three times next year, in fact. And then there's you know commentary in our market saying that you know interest rates may not have you know done enough to slow down the inflation rate. So, you know, a lot of conflicting information, a lot of really worrying information for a lot of people. 
So this is going to be a very short podcast, but the essence of, of this particular podcast from my perspective is really to just give you food for thought. The first one is if you are in the unlucky situation right now where you are feeling completely stretched, you've overextended yourself, you're struggling with your repayments on debt, um, you find yourself in a position where you're barely keeping your head above water. One of the things that I struggled with as a younger investor, and I found myself in that position many times, was it would have been very simple for me to actually exit one of my assets or exit my primary asset and just sort of go back half a step to square one. Um, and yet I struggled so much with that. Um, and I understand, you know, it's really hard. You, you've made all this effort to buy this asset. It's expensive, transaction costs are high. And then the idea of potentially letting go of something that even, you know, worse, you may have an emotional attachment to, that the whole family may have an emotional attachment to, can be very, very challenging. But there were several times in my life over the last 20 or so years where, you know, I would redline my finances, I would push to the limit and find myself in this awful situation where I just, you know, I knew that if I didn't take radical action, I wasn't going to make it. And so there were times like that where I made the counterintuitive move of selling an asset, liquidating something just to bring down the pressure and get my head above water again. And I can tell you now there was, you know, I, I was often conflicted about it, but in the end, I knew that it was going to give me a much higher sleep at night factor. And so, you know, for those of you who feel the pressure, who feel that hot water, there's, there's no need to have that, um, that, you know, pride, if you like, that you have to make it work. It's okay to take a momentary step backwards in order to move forwards. Um, the second thing that I would comment on is if you are in the situation where you haven't yet entered the market, you're thinking about getting into investing, one of the things to remind yourself of is that, you know, in times of volatility, when fear is high, when people are often forced to sell under stressful situations, there can be really great opportunities to not necessarily par, you know, purchase at a, a bargain or purchase at a massive discount, but to actually have more opportunity to choose from. And so from my perspective, as a real estate investor particularly, um, I would be looking at the next six to 12 months, particularly if I'm buying my first property, as an opportunity to get my ducks in a row, make sure I'm ready. Do I know my borrowing capacity? Do I know um, how much cash I have? Am I good with my money? Am I being a great steward? Are there things that I need to do to clean up house? Are there tax returns I need to do? So that when a stellar opportunity presents itself, you are actually in a position to pull the trigger. There are so many people who have expressed to me over their lives deep regret that they were in the right place at the right time with the right series of opportunities and they just didn't have their, you know, front of house and back of house in order so they couldn't actually take action. You know, they, they hadn't, you know, figured out how much they could borrow or, you know, hadn't really tidied up tax returns and things like that. And, you know, to look back and think that you missed out on an opportunity because you just didn't, you know, you weren't prepared basically is, is soul destroying. So guys, for those of you who are interested in understanding more about how to get going on your investment journey, please stay tuned. I'm, I'm really trying to create content right now for those people who want some support to get out of the gates on the right foot. So anyway, guys, till next time, take care. If you're feeling frustrated that despite doing everything right in the property investing playbook and you're no closer to financial freedom, then head on over to inkosiwealth.com to learn more about how you can use alternative investments to catapult your investing income and blend strategies to shave decades off your timeline to financial freedom. See you on the next episode.